Okay, so now I'm going to do a bit of a revision. So I'm gonna make a smaller, another thumbnail that uh, captures more of the essence that I want. And an easy way of doing that is I'm gonna go ahead and draw it. And I told myself last time that I really want like an A and B um, picture. So still thumbnail size. I know that I'm zoomed in a little bit. Maybe I should make this a bit smaller. Because I want to be able to fit about um, four of these on a page. Uh, sometimes I do six. That's for myself. But I want to keep... Let's take a look. I want to keep this uh, treasure chest. So I quite like this. And I really like this palm tree. And I kind of like this RT. Uh, kind of thing going on and I kind of like the numbers being giant that's another thing I like so let's see if I can create another one of these with that in mind oops I've drawn on the wrong layer but you guys get what I'm saying okay all right so I want the tree the tree was coming in from one angle here but I'm going to try and bring it in from the side now and I'm just gonna really okay I had the X marks the spot in the box for the doubloons or or whatever and I want it to be tilted in a way where the box itself comes back towards the palm tree. So I might bring that over on the side there. You might be doing this in paper, so it might be a bit easier for you to just erase if you have a pencil, or you can just keep your sketchy lines kind of like I do if you're using pen. I might put some blooms on the ground And I might go ahead and put nine, twenty, third, and then maybe at you know, whatever. I'm kind of mixing like a modern uh, type of aesthetic with this. Seven p.m. And then next to, maybe I can put the X. Uh, let's see, where do I want the X? Maybe somewhere like here. And it can have the information of where the event is, like in this little box kind of area. That will be my representational box of where this is. And I might want to make sure that there's a little bit more um, interesting things going on at the top. So I'm going to put party here with a big R. And there's still a lot of empty space like here. So what I might want to do is utilize that empty space by actually migrating some of my elements up here. So this bottom bit isn't too cluttered. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I might do this 923 at 7 p.m. And I'll bring over this other bottom information. I need to know the where and it should be clear where it is and I'll still put my X probably floating up at the top of this maybe 
you have to be careful for there's certain tangents that are being made right here. Tangents are when two points kind of get too close to each other. And right here by the treasure chest, I'm trying to make sure that this tangent, and I'm going to zoom in just to show you. I try to work zoomed out, but you can see here is a, a risk of having a tangent kind of towards the bottom. And this is the location. Okay, so I think this is what I want for like my party poster. Let's just call it a day, call it something like that. What you would do next is uh, simply, you know, using Photoshop or, or whatever, um, copy paste this multiple times over. So I'm going to take this, select it. copy and then uh, paste it and then I'm asking uh, for it to be done uh, let's go for four times so it's the same one over and over again then in Photoshop what you can do is create a new layer. I know that I'm not working in Photoshop, but it's the same process. Uh, you'll create a new layer. I personally like to multiply that layer. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can draw directly on top if you'd like. You can do a lot of different things. Uh, if you have a lot of you know different techniques that you'd like to use, you can do that. Uh, you can also use uh, blending modes on brushes. But uh, what I like to do is kind of go for it. So I'm going to just take some kind of weird sandy color and I might even just go for like maybe it's a darker party and I'm being really sloppy with this but that's kind of the point I want to make sure that I just get the idea down looks like I have a bit of a this style of brush um, is multiplying by itself so that's kind of cool I guess I'm not quite sure because you can see that it's blending randomly. So I don't know if I don't, if I, don't, I may not like that because I can't control it. I might change some brushes. All right, uh, maybe I want the palm tree. Yeah, and you can see how it's multiplying. That might be okay for the fact that this is like a nighttime take. Uh, when you kind of go for color comps, you're just kind of playing around to see uh, what type of lighting you want sometimes. Uh, you can also do tonal uh, comps. So for instance, you could just use um, gray and figure out the tone first. Where's your light and darks? like this. So I know that this is going to be kind of a mid-tone here. And remember where there's more contrast, the eye will go. So up here where the party is, I might want to make that a little bit lighter. Maybe put a fake cloud or two in here. I might want to uh, lighten this up a bit towards the bottom. And then when I have this kind of like by the tree, I can add a little bit of darkness here. Add a little bit of dark here because this is going to fall under shadow. And I can go on another layer 
and then I can color on top of this. So I can actually go and create a multiplied layer and then color on top of what I've done. And I won't have to worry about the tonal variation. So um, it depends on how you want to work. You can see how I'm kind of skipping between two different ways of attacking this. That's just the way I like to do things. I just kind of go with the flow. I don't know what color the treasure chest might be. Maybe it's also brown. Or I might go online, look for images um, of treasure chests. So this current layer that I'm working on is a multiply layer and it's capturing the information from the layer underneath. But because of the gray, it's kind of dull. It's not as vibrant as it could be. And I might want to also like color the lettering. So there's a couple of things I can do. I can, in the same layer, I can choose what type of um, blending mode I want to do on this layer. And notice that like darken looks actually really nice. Uh, it looks kind of poppy in what I'd expect out of a party poster. If I go and I create a, another layer, I'm going to actually try and use um, maybe color dodge or maybe screen. We'll find out. I just want to see if I can make this P for party. Oh, no, that's not working. I want to see if I can color this like yellow or something. I might be better suited to actually go over it with the regular layer and do that so let's see yeah see lighter color it doesn't really attach very well add does a pretty good job screen does a pretty good job um, i can bring that down in temperature too or opacity i should say and then as i play around with these i look at that pin light looks really nice and it has like a little bit of the pink there so i actually might actually keep that or I can use that for another one so let me just go ahead pin light looks really cool and yeah, these other ones may be aren't they may not be the thing difference looks really nice for maybe this other one at the top very messy but I'm just trying to figure out different styles that I can be using so I can clean up these edges if I want or I can just skip over it um, I just want like a really rough rendition because I'm just doing this for myself mostly um, unless I have to present this to a client. I would really go in very neatly and just make sure that at least the party portion of it, I would probably just go back over in a normal color. So let me just show you what I mean by that. I would actually create a normal layer and then just trace on top of my writing that I did previously because that'll show up neater. I think sometimes it's hard to see when you are working in your own head. It's like very easy. You're like, oh yeah, like I know what I meant, but when you are communicating with other people, you need to be very precise in how you communicate that information so you can get the reaction that you want. So if you really want someone to like a particular one, then that's where you want to make sure that you take the time on it. Um, but definitely don't flub over the other ones. I, I'm just saying that um, you want to make sure that you take your time if you're presenting your uh, color comps to a client. And that's really always. 
So last time I was like, oh, I really like this pink. So I might just start with a pink, find a pink. And I can move, I'm gonna move this underneath. So I'm dragging the layer down. This is the same thing that I could do in Photoshop. These happen to be my favorite colors, so it somehow works its way into a lot of my work. I don't know why. And then let's see if I can. I want to kind of make a faux sunset maybe. And then with this particular brush I'm using, it's like blending everything. I don't know how I feel about that, but. Probably want to actually look at what a sunset looks like before proceeding, but that's fine. And bring that purple into here. Just trying to make this look like a fancy drink or something. You can already tell which one's my favorite one <laughs> by how much time I'm spending on certain ones over others. But this takes a little bit more time And um, if I find, like personally, if I find a one that I kind of want to go with, uh, I would probably go with it. But you never know, like if you take the time to create your color comps, uh, what your outcome will be. Because you'll be inspired from one to the next to the next. Um, a lot of people will do probably, I think, four to six color comps, sometimes even eight. Uh, depending uh, on their own process. I feel like one of these looks like a Nickelodeon poster or something like for a kid's show. And I'm trying to still get that light and dark in. And then for this party, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and come back over it with the white. As if it was like shiny. It might add some little shiny glittery gold marks or like some early stars. to kind of help the eye go from around and around. I also forgot when I redrew this that I should have a X marks the spot. Let's see if I can put this right back in. And I wonder if it'll look okay with some rather than others. Like, yeah, I think when you put red into something, your eye just goes directly to it, um, which is a good and bad thing because you want your eye to be able to move around the page. Yeah, I'm not going to really go in that direction probably. So I'm probably gonna get rid of the X marks the spot idea and just keep going with some coloring options here. So I have like this kind of midnight glowy thing I have, uh, kind of a regular um, style, I think, uh, of like a pool party. And then I have like this really strange Nickelodeon glowy thing, which I kind of like. And then um, this other one, I'm not quite sure which direction I'll go for it, but let's see. You just have to, sometimes you run out of ideas and you want to push yourself, so. Oh wait, maybe I'll Mm. 
And then of course, like, you know, you can pull from your color, your color um, choices that you've created. in your mood board. But I'm just kind of winging it right now. But I think if I spent more time on the mood board that this would be a little bit easier for me. All right, let me make sure that's multiplied. All right, so I can keep finessing these <laughs> um, all, all morning, all day. Maybe I might stylize the clouds on this one. And then a good practice too is you can step away from your monitor uh, and squint your eyes, or you can just squint when you look at things to see if everything is working like you can identify each object individually. So I can squint and I can tell that uh, for the most part, the colors are working except for the kind of midnight looking one. It needs to be lightened because I cannot identify the palm tree or the treasure. And because I can't identify those things, uh, it's unreadable. So I might just go in and lighten certain things up. Maybe choose another blending mode. All right, and that's kind of getting there, but I think that this is maybe too sloppy overall. So I would probably uh, go in with my eyedropper tool and on another separate layer kind of correct some of this messy quality to it. Even though it's just me, it's just not working. And that's because it's so sloppy. And when things aren't readable, that's feeding the whole purpose of creating this, right? So I think that that's much better. I can see I have some opportunities in creating a little bit of contrast down here. So I'm going to go down there, grab a new layer. And I know that this is a little bit messy. But I'm trying to find, I might have to go darker or lighter. Uh, with this oops delete yeah so that palm tree is popping out way better now I just needed to change 
the background color for it and that's enough contrast so I can now for the most part now I'm really nitpicking let me go a little bit lighter for this palm tree even though it's kind of a fake color I want to make sure it still stands out right I bring down some of the red so it really can stand out yeah that's looking good I want to make sure that I go back in grab that there's this P that I want to make sure it stands out otherwise people will be like what's an arty so I think I might do that I know all of them make sure that the P is more prevalent and then for this one I guess it's in black Clean that up a little bit. And this is using an eyedropper tool going back in to clean. Eyedropper, color over. Eyedropper, color over. There we go. And then I scope my eyes again, see what's going on. There's something about this blue outline on this that actually seems to make this these letters pop. So I might have to remember that for the final, depending on which one I choose. So I think I'm going to go ahead and say that these are done color comps before I get really nitpicky with them. Um, I think this took me... um less than 30 minutes to complete these uh different ones but notice that i'm i usually like to think about color temperature when i uh, look at these i go well do i want to make a warm one do i want to make a cool one do i want to make a um actual color of certain things uh versus maybe making something that is um not exactly the actual color uh, and just kind of play around with it. So I can do like a nighttime version, daytime version. Uh, there's so many different ways of trying to get uh, color comps. And then on top of, you know, actually changing what the color of the object is. If you want a more natural or kind of a crazy looking color. And that's where your research will come into play. And then also if you are currently working on this project where we're exploring different time periods like modern versus old timey versus um, pop art. Uh, you can see here that I have some pop art influences, possibly even some modern influences here. But as far as something that looks more old timey, I would probably have to uh, work a little bit harder and do another style of thumbnail for that one. So uh, that's uh, all I got for you guys for this. And I, uh, Hope to see you in the next module.